Well, Trump did it again. He really pissed everybody off. He's at the White House, having a little news thing, and he whipped off his mask. And the progressives just blew their minds. It's one of the things that happened today, and there were others as well that I've been reading about that have just really made me wonder what the hell's going on with all this stuff with the masks. I mean, I've worn a mask. I wore a mask before I had to wear a mask. I wore a mask when I no longer had to wear a mask, but that was my personal choice. But there's a lot of crap going on about masks, a lot of crap going on about statistics. Usually attributed to Mark Twain, maybe someone else said it, I don't know. A fat checker can check it out, it doesn't really matter, but the point's the same. Three kinds of lies. Lies, damned lies, and statistics. And that's sort of what I want to focus on in this video. As if Trump whipping off the mask was enough to make me laugh today at him and to get upset with what I saw in the, in the media as they responded to it. Then I ran across another story. And at first I thought, this has to be satire. This must be from a Babylon Bee, but it wasn't. It was actually from the office of a governor of California, Gavin Newsom. And what he's advising people to do, and they even have a little chart showing you how to do it, is while if you're eating or drinking in a restaurant or a bar, while you can take your mask off, they recommend that between bites, you put the mask on. And then you put it down and you bite, and you put it on again, and then back, 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 back. <laughs> and this is real. This is a governor of the, what you, know, you could argue is the major state in the country recommending that his citizens move our mask back and forth while they're eating. I, I seem to recall somewhere that one of the things we were told about masks is when you put them on, get them in place and leave them alone and don't keep touching them. What he's recommending is every time you take a sip of a drink or food, you touch your mask and move it bring it down, then put it back up, bring it down, put it back up, put it back up, and you're eating with your fingers and your hands. I mean, this looks like it's going to make you less safe rather than more safe. But, you know, I'm sure he's got science behind him. And there was something else that happened over the weekend. I went to a comedy club. You know, it's Florida. You can fill the places up again. And I drove up in my car with, with Salim. We didn't have our masks on. I mean, if we're going to give something to one another, we're going to do it at home, not in the car anyway. What's the point? But we get out of the car. There's nobody there, but we have to go up to the comedy club and you can't get in unless you have a mask. So we have to put our masks on and we're walking across the parking lot, just her and I. There's nobody near us. And we get to the door. Now I'm going to you know, compress time here so you don't go through the whole period of waiting and everything. But we get to the door and they check to make sure we have a mask. So we walk in and there's like three or four people hanging around. And we, we go up to the counter and we show our tickets and they stamp them or do something and tell us, you know, you know they'll open the doors when the, the show that's on is done and they clean the place up. So we have to wait. And then eventually they open up. And we, you know, go in, in the line with the people with our masks on and they seat us at our table. There's a sign seating and we're sitting at the table. Now the table is up on a raised platform right by the runway where all the traffic is for all the, the servers and all to go by with the foods and the drink. And as soon as we sit down, we don't need our masks anymore. So now this whole process, we were, you know, checking in, there were like four or five people around, we had our masks on. Then moving through with the herd coming in, yeah, there may be about 15 or 20 people near us, so we had our masks on then. And then you sit at a table and we're surrounded by other tables, you know, and, and there's loads of people there. The whole place is filled as it usually is, you know, pre-COVID. And I don't have my mask on. She doesn't have her mask on. Nobody around us has their mask on. Their servers wear masks. But people are going, you know, they go to the bathroom or whatever, they're running by. And when they run by, they run right by me because, you know, they're a little bit lower than me because I'm upraised. And I don't have my mask on. 
And this is, this is all according to the regulations based on science. And then when the show's over, to get out, we have to put our masks back on and then go over to the door and then head out. And you're, you're, you know, around even fewer people. And I'm sitting there, you know, this whole process is just, it's just absurd. I mean, if you look at the point of who's near you and how much time, I mean, we spent, you know, a minute checking in, two minutes getting in there, and then about an hour and a half at our table, surrounded by people without masks, you know, apl applauding and yelling and whistling and doing all these other things. But, but this is science. This is designed uh, to keep me safe. And the highlight of the act, it was J.P., Sears, who is, has a YouTube channel, I'll, I'll put his channel name below because I think he's pretty funny. And he, he made a comment that, that really resonated with a lot of people, including me. He said, you know, how many times are you driving around and you see somebody wearing a mask in a car and they're all by themselves? It's not like they're in there with strangers or in there with the kids or something. This is some, some guy or some woman driving a car all by themselves and they have the mask on. And J.P. Sears says, Whenever he sees that, he always wonders if they're wearing it. Are they wearing a condom too? Which I thought is, is broke up the whole place. Because why not? I mean, the chances of getting COVID if you're sitting in a car by yourself are about the same as getting an STD if you're sitting in a car by yourself. So if you're going to wear a mask, why not wear a condom? Maybe the, the, there's science behind this. They need to come out and tell us we should wear condoms when we're driving to prevent the spread of STDs. It's just been that kind of week that, that made me really think about how, how ludicrous all this has become. Not the idea that we should wear masks to help prevent COVID. It's the implementation of the science, which just boggles the mind sometimes as to, you know, the whole idea of taking your mask on and off between bites, which seems to destroy the whole idea of wearing a mask. Or before when uh, Newsom said you could go to the beach, but you had, to, you had to sit on the wet sand and not the dry sand, as if, you know, that makes a difference. Or the idea that you, can, you can't protest mask wearing, you know, <laughs> that just means you're a racist or anti-science. But it's all right to go out and protest and loot and burn and all those other things. But that's not going to help spread COVID. I mean, it's just all this. It's how you implement the science. It's not maybe the problem is not the science itself, which is constantly shifting, as science should do. Science should shift. You know, they learn, get more information. They make new judgments. And they, that means they could change their minds. There's nothing wrong with that. That doesn't make me worry or distrust the scientists. I trust them more when they change their minds and admit that they were wrong before. That's what they should do. The problem is the politicians don't seem capable of keeping up with these changes or interpreting the science. And that's where we're running into problems. And a lot of that has to do with statistics. That's what I'm going to talk about next. Statistics is, is interesting. And the statistics about COVID are very interesting. You know, the county where I live in Florida, it's a you could say it's a Republican state. It's a red state, but our county's blue. Hillsborough County, Florida. And early on, they used to publish the statistics for the county, and the mortality rate was always right there at the top. You know, it was 13.7%, 12.6%. But it kept going down because, you know, initially, it's based on, they weren't doing a lot of testing. So the people they know have COVID-19 were the people who were in the hospital. So you test them and basically it's 100% rate and a lot of them were dying, the early ones coming in. So the mortality rate was, you know, double digits, but it kept dropping. The more they start, when they started to do testing, it kept dropping and dropping and dropping. Then it went under 10%, then it went under 9%. And then it was around 8% when the county officials started talking about putting on a curfew. Now at this point, you know, I'm wondering like, why are they gonna hit us with a curfew? You know, the mortality rate was 13% a couple weeks ago, 12% a couple weeks ago. Now it's 8% and dropping, and now they're going to layer a curfew on top of everything else they've done to us? It didn't seem to make any sense. And lo and behold, the next day I open, you know, the little website, and the mortality statistics are gone. Once they drop below 8%, they didn't post them anymore. But I guess they weren't frightening enough for us to, to believe that we needed to listen to what they were saying. So they just stopped you know, putting them up there. Now, you all remember when uh, the death st st stats for COVID-19 were, you know, in double digits. Right now in the United States, because we've been doing more testing and, you know, they have more treatments available for people and uh, to help them, you know, survive. 
I think the national death rate's about 2.5%. It's about, uh, let, me, let me just check, make sure I get these right. Yeah, 2.5%. It's about 2% in Florida, the, the current mortality rate. About 1.5% in a county where I live, Hillsborough County. But you have to understand, that's the rate of death if you get the disease. The odds of dying if you have the disease are greater than the odds of catching it. And if you look at a county like Hillsborough, which is about 1.5 million people, if you look at the odds of both catching COVID-19 and dying from it, and let me just read this again, make sure I get these numbers exactly right, are 0. 0.000446. Let me read that again. 0.000446. That's the chance not only of dying of it, but you have to catch it first. To catch COVID-19 and die from it, those are the odds, which is about four, four one thousandth of a percent. I mean, these are, are really low odds. And we have, have had all these you know, shutdowns, businesses going out of business, being destroyed, people's lives ruined. You know, we have more suicides, we have more uh, drug overdoses, rise in alcoholism, people couldn't get to their AA meetings. I'm probably going to lose a kidney because the biopsy that was scheduled was considered non-essential. And it, by the time they were able to do it, my kidney's destroyed. I'm going to have to go back on dialysis or get another transplant. I'm a, I'm a COVID victim. I'm one of the victims who didn't catch the disease, but I've been injured. I'm going to suffer losses if I don't get another kidney and I go back on dialysis. I mean, your, your chance of living is about five years. I've been on three and a half years already. What's that mean? I got another year and a half to live. Uh, you know, this is the reality of the shutdown. Lost dreams, lost hopes, families destroyed. All for what? For four one thousandth of a percent of catching it and dying ultimately. And these numbers may drop more. I mean, flu in Florida is about one percent mortality rate. We're down to 1.2% for COVID-19. Now, of course, they did lots of stuff with COVID-19 they don't do with the flu. So if we hadn't done those things, you could argue it would have been higher. But, you know, what's the cost? And wh where does this end? And, you know, why don't, when was the last time you turned on the news and you saw somebody on the news, a doctor, a scientist, or a politician, or anybody say, well, the chance of catching and dying COVID-19 is, you know, four, four, four one thousandths of a percent. They never talk about that. They'll say it's, you know, it's this, or it's you know, 2.5 or 2.2, 1.5, which sounds grim to a degree, but only to a degree. I mean, when I was growing up, you know, I, I was 11 or 12 when I got a vaccine for polio, the chance of dying from polio, you call it, it was 2.5%, which is worse than what it is today for COVID-19. Well, there was no vaccine. We went to the pool. They would shut it down if somebody actually came down with polio at the pool. But that never happened where I was. You'd go to the public pool, boulevard pools in Philadelphia I used to go to, later on highway pool. You didn't worry about polio. Worry about drowning. You'd be getting your sneakers stolen or something like that. I had that happen once. But I didn't worry about catching polio. But the chance of catching and dying polio were higher than the chances of catching and dying of COVID-19. And if you catch it as a kid, you know, your rest of your life's ruined, even if you survive. You know, I still remember reading as a kid, the boy in the iron lung was scared the hell out of me. So let me reiterate, I'm not arguing against the science of mask wear. I'm not saying masks do not help spread the prevention of COVID-19. I'm just saying it's the implementation of that, which is the political side of that decision. I mean, when I was out the other night, I would say at least a third of the people had those cloth bandana masks, you know, uh, Harley Davidson masks or U.S. flag masks or you know, all kinds of different symbols and things. Uh, I saw some Trump masks. I didn't see any Biden masks, but maybe Biden people wouldn't be there to see 
JP Sears. That's possible. But I've read story after story after story that they don't work. So you got a third of the people in there are wearing masks coming in and going out. It don't work anyway. And then I saw a couple of people with the embroidered masks, knitted masks, like, like, yeah, they look nice, but they're totally useless. They got little holes in them, you know, but you could, you could drive peas through those holes, some, some of those masks. And that's what I'm talking about, the implementation, the idea that, you know, you should p pull your mask on and off. Every time you take a bite of food, put the mask on, took the mask off, take another bite, put the mask back on, pull the mask off, take a sip of your drink, put the mask back on. I mean, and this is coming from the governor of the big state in the federal union, California, Gavin Newsom. How can they put this stuff out? I mean, where's the, tell me where the peer review double blind study is that said that this is a good idea, that this is a way to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. I'm sure there, there's no such study available for that. This is them you know, shooting from the hip. We know from the court case in Pennsylvania that they, they decided what was an essential or non-essential business. They didn't go to scientists or businessmen. They had a bunch of bureaucrats sitting around deciding, oh, I think that's essential, you know, uh, non-essential, uh, essential. I mean, this, this is how decisions are made here. It was that old saying, the one thing is, you know, you don't want to see a sausage and legislation made. Maybe what we don't, the new one should be, we don't want to see, two, one thing you never want to see is uh, making of sausage and making of COVID-19 restrictions, because it's, it's really crazy. It's just, it's just very crazy. And again, for the YouTube censors, I am not saying that the science that says masks work is wrong. I'm not debating that. I'm not challenging that. I'm talking about the implementation of that science by politicians and unnamed mindless bureaucrats. That's what I'm talking about. Anyway, what, what's your take on all this? Let me know in a comment. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos. Share the video with your friends. That's really helpful. And... Until the next time, stand tall, confront the resistance, and keep fighting.